Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to another episode of iHeartGeek, the Star Wars edition. This is the sound of blasters missing everywhere. Stormtroopers are filing. They're bad. It's yeah. sad. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars. <laughs> so I, I'm Dub, and I'm your producer today, and we have a fantastic uh, lineup today. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to introduce everybody right now. Um, I'm yeah, I write the show and stuff. I'm Dub. <laughs> I'm Lies. I do the YouTube stuff and some more background things. Nice. I'm Miss Geeky Page. I'm your Instagram girl and comics girl. I'm PB and Jason. I saw Star Wars in the drive-in. I wasn't even born yet. I know. In, in your American graffiti vehicle? <laughs> My American graffiti vehicle. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, we, f- for probably one of the worst kept spoilers in history, Dumb. across from the table. Let's oh. Kodge the Force go. Holy crap. Oh, man. <laughs> Wait He's a minute. Back. It's Kodge. It's, I look great in blue. Oh. <laughs> Does that there. mean you died? That's- Yes. <laughs> and you're just kind of back on for... Uh... I got better. <laughs> oh, better. Kaj! Hey, Welcome what's back. going on, guys? Hello, it is Kaj. I am back. Right. At, least, at, least, at least for temporarily for Yay. the Star Wars episodes. Yes. <laughs> yes, for the next... I could not... What? Oh. No. I, I, I could not just stay away when, when you guys were doing Star Wars. I'm like, no, I will find time in my hectic life right now. But yes. And you did. Yay. I did. I got a good feeling about this. Hey. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Ooh, TT. <laughs> so for the next two weeks, we are talking, this week we are talking the original trilogy of Star Wars. That is episode four, five, and six. The only ones that really matter. Mm-hmm. And then next week, if you want to tune in, I guess, we're talking everything else, everything else. which goes books and video games and Disney, uh, Disney, Disney Plus, Mandalorian, um, episodes one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Um, and just so you are aware, this these are recorded before the last Star Wars comes out. So if we give any spoilers, it's not intentional. We don't know anything. Yeah, we don't know what's coming up. Anyways. I thought. I came into this thinking we were talking about the first three movies. Oh, is that not what we're doing today? Yes, no. we are. No. We're actually talking about the first the three first movies three ever made. produced. Yeah, yeah, oh, we're talking I about the first three movies. We're talking, oh, we're talking about, about real not- life chronological mm-hmm. order. Mm-hmm. Let's start with episode. Not four. release <laughs> release oh, in so this particular. The first three important movies ever made <laughs> in the mm-hmm. geek, uh, lexicon, I think we could say. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that now that what you just said that is. Cool. I would have to say that's an understatement because the 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 most important movie for me, first most important movie for me as a child was absolutely Star Wars, mm-hmm. no doubt about it, hands down, life changing. Well, Star Wars is the first sci-fi I remember ever seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, I I know it's a fact. When I was less than one years old, my parents took me to the movie theater. That was the first movie that I actually saw. Sure, mm-hmm. and I think that was a lot of people. Can have a very similar experience to that one. I'm trying to think, what did I see first? Did I see Star Trek or Star Wars? First? I think I saw Star Wars first. Like, I probably saw Star Trek on TV. Right. But um, I remember, do you guys remember, gosh, this might, I might age out of all of you on this one. Do any of you guys remember Sid and Marty Croft? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sid and Marty Croft well, had blind. Darth Vader as a guest. No, not me at all. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. So, yeah, so so Darth Vader was a guest on a Sid and Marty Croft show on a Saturday morning. Uh-huh. And that was my first exposure to Star Wars. And actually, they were, like, interviewing him, and he was nice and all this stuff. And then about a week later, I saw the film in the drive-in. I, You know, that just triggered a memory for me. I saw Star Wars on The Muppet Show. Yes. Yeah, I remember it was that. Luke Skywalker. That, yeah, the, yeah, Mark it's Luke Skywalker. Mark Hamill was like running up and down, like we're mm-hmm. trying to find the Empire. But yeah, and, so. Mike, and uh, Piggy was trying to make time with him. Yeah, because that's Piggy. <laughs> that's that's what what Piggy like, I want to see that. And I don't think the Kermit could have been ever been <laughs> mad about it. Nope. Because like, what do you say? Nope. He would have gotten force choked. Nope. So <laughs> in the the show that you watched Darth Vader on, you said he was nice, and then you yeah, saw the, actually, the movie. Yeah, it was strange because. <laughs> The Sid Marty that had Cro- to be very confusing. Sid, Sid and Marty Croft <laughs> show was like these seventies like like rock pop weird okay. kind of colorful band. It was a bad, band. It was a bad acid trip. Yeah, right. yeah. and it was one of those deals. And they and they're like 
so we got a special guest on the show, Darth Vader. So they had him on. He was like up on a podium kind of. And was they're he asking Scottish questions. or was he James Earl Jones? It was James Earl Jones' voice mm-hmm. with David Prowse in the suit. And um, I bet it's on YouTube. i have to find it somewhere. Yeah. But, oh, I'm um, sure it is. Yeah, but it was, uh, yeah, he was like just answering questions. It was weird and, and cool. But then, you know, then I saw him in Star Wars and it was like, this was oh not the person goodness. I was promised. Yeah, exactly. Nice at all. <laughs> but wow. that's okay because the opening of Star Wars, when the rebels line up in the hallway of the mm-hmm. blockade runner, and you're watching, and you know you're like, "Are these the good guys? Are these the bad guys? I don't know." You know, and then that the stormtroopers come in, and still they're all in white. So you're like, "Maybe these are the bad guys. I'm not sure." But they're fighting, they're shooting each other, killing each other in the hallway. Then Darth Vader enters the blockade runner, mm-hmm. and you're absolutely certain who the bad guy is <laughs> at that point. Yeah. So today's show is brought to you by Crazy Boba Fett's Carbon Freezing Emporium, cooler than ice at half the price. Um, now, before we get started, we're going to be we're going to be going all over the board on Star Wars. Yep. So now, I thought it, we got started. Question, <laughs> question, because I just thought of this right now. Okay, is Rogue One? In this no. in this discussion, no. No, negative. In the next one, even it will it be a lot before. in the next one. Okay, yeah. right. Mm. But I, if if you guys like the, um, I'm better than you because my Star Wars knowledge, and we're gonna yell at semantics for hours. This is not gonna be that show. So you, if even if you have a limited amount of Star Wars, you're not gonna feel stupid for listening Mm-mm. to it. So <laughs> I just want to put that out. And so let's get started with the game show. Here's a generic game show for you. Okay, guys, I got five questions for you today. Five? Five. 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 Uh, uh, uh. Oh, wait, that's the wrong show. Five okay. times. Five times. <laughs> All righty, let's start with the easy and go to the hard. You guys ready? Here we go. What was the original name of Return of the Jedi? I'm going to go this way. Okay. So, miss your cash. It was called Revenge of the Jedi. It was indeed. The PB. Revenge of the Jedi. Dub. Revenge of the Jedi. My only point. Nice splice. Revenge of the Jedi. Oh. There's a reason you know that one. <laughs> <right>. Okay. <laughs> Number two. Darth Vader is ranked where on the American Film Institute's list of 50 greatest villains? Kaj? I was definitely thinking it was the top five, but I don't think it's number one. So I went with third. That is correct. Oh, he is I, third. Wow. Oh, very good. I put first. Maybe? Nope. I put uh, one. Nope. That's crazy. Nice. That's so much higher than I thought it was going to be. I put eight. No, nope, I just wonder who's two and one. I don't like know. I didn't Norman even know that. Good <laughs> job, Kaj. Huh? Nice care. one. Yeah. Good job. Which one was 42? That was, pure, that was <laughs> force <know>. guessing. <laughs> force guessing, yes. <laughs> okay, number three. What is the name of the Wookiee homeworld? Kashyyyk. It is Kashyyyk, and you pronounced it correctly. Kashyyyk. Okay. I prefer to only use the Wookiee tongue. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we accept that as an answer? Mm, I like your creativity points, but no. Mm. Rob, you are. Put Bear Planet. <laughs> Bear Planet? Bear that, Planet, yeah. That would Bear be Planet. Endor. That's what Kashyyyk translates to. <laughs> okay, I think it would be Bear... I think it would be Endor, but that's okay. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It, it, it's the big Ewoks. <laughs> the that's big what they call Ewoks. it. Yeah. All right. It's Rooted. pituitary gland problem <laughs> Ewok world. Number four. How many do-backs are in the original 1977 version of A Star Wars A New Hope? Cause So, Courtney had to help us out a little bit because we none of us really knew what a do-back was. <laughs> a do-back is the creature that the star, stormtroopers are riding in Tantooine. So, if, like, I think Mr. Lucas put in way more in his, like, re, <laughs> re-digitized version. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to just say one. No, but you're close. I'm two. always close. It is two. <laughs> I picked zero. Okay. If I thought about it more, I probably would have said two, but I put zero okay. because <laughs> I wasn't alive to see that original. Nice. <laughs> and it's been like... Altered 87,000 yeah. <laughs> Impossible to find the original I only watch the remakes because those are the only ones worth watching. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know when Han shot second? McClunky? McClunky. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, just so we know, there is a tie right now between Kaj and PB. Ooh. Alrighty. Number five. This is the winner takes all. Kaj and PB. Not counting Ray's screams, who is the first voice we hear in Ray's force vision after touching Luke's lightsaber? Kaj. Uh, I have one, 
We can't change our answer, can we? No. Darn. Okay. <laughs> I put Obi Wan Kenobi. Shouldn't have showed it to me. Nope. Mm. I put Obi Wan Kenobi. Nope. I put Leia. Nope. I put Obi Wan. Nope. Is it Yoda? It's Yoda. Uh. It's either one or the other. Okay, so that gives us. I'm going to have to take this one back because I was, need a tiebreaker. Darn it. It was Ian McDermott. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's my tiebreaker Who wields a purple lightsaber and why? Ka- it, this is it, only between Kaj and PB. It's Mace Windu, and mm-hmm. the reason why is because he can use both dark and light forces. Red and blue make <laughs> red and blue make purple. Think so. No, it's PB, right. what's your answer? It's Mace Windu, and it's because his kyber crystal is purple. No, you're both <laughs> wrong. It's because Samuel L. Jackson wanted a purple lightsaber. So that's, they gave him a purple. So they light. gave him that's a purple That's the only lightsaber. reason why it they, has been oh, on. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I think yeah, in the expanded just, universe, I am looking for that. So, so with that being that, said, we don't have a winner. I have right, heard that it's a tie. It's he, it is a he, a, is, he can both use dark and light forces. That, that was, was later added, established. That was later in the, established to give an excuse as to why the purple lightsaber is in there, and no so, one else. Okay, has okay, everybody, put your I'm, lightsabers I'm, away. We're good. <laughs> so tower down. Okay. Technically, you would both be right. That means you're both the winners. Yay. So it's a tie between PB and God. Yay! 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 <laughs> Tied we did. Tied we did. No, do, do or do not. There is no tie. There is no tie. <laughs> so does that mean you both like gotta fall on the lightsaber? No. <laughs> Just asking. I don't know. Okay, so let's talk um, kind of a research segment a little bit. Let's go. Let's talk about a little bit of the history that we know of with the original three. Um, this is probably going to go a while. Um, <laughs> did you have something set up? I do not have you something. Do not set up. Have something set I'm up. sorry. Okay. Oh, well, uh, well, let's just uh, <laughs> yeah, we, let's we just go to the these two. It's pretty oh, easy. It. Oops, <laughs> oops. No, it's a. Um, George Lucas was born in <laughs> Desto, California. <laughs> Coming off of the success of his hit American Graffiti, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. George Lucas wanted to basically tell his version of Flash Gordon, right. and he came up with this movie that was inspired both by Flash Gordon and samurai movies. Yeah, Japanese mm-hmm. samurai films. Mm-hmm. A lot and of spaghetti western in there. Every Kira, single Kira studio Kira person Kira. that knew him, that worked with him, that was associated with anyway, told him he was crazy and this film would never be anything and it was going to be horrible. Yeah, they were wrong. It's, and basi- uh. well, basically what then, then with with him, he's like, well, I... I'll do the film, and if it's a big success, then you guys get to keep all the profits, but yet, I will take all of the toy line. And he was the first person ever to yeah, do that. Yeah, that was his brilliant move. And I think, wasn't it uh, uh, either Spielberg or, yeah, I think Spielberg, he asked Spielberg if he wanted to end uh, a part in it, and Spielberg said no, and then it Silly, blew up. Silliness. And, yeah, <laughs> blew, blew up, blew up, and multi-million dollar multi-million dollar franchise and he's kicking himself now that he should have say anything you want about any of those films that man is the smartest man well with the toy (laughs) with the toy decision absolutely yes that was one of the most brilliant moves ever so Mm -hmm. this is this kind of an important question to me and i'm gonna ask you guys so star wars the new hope was a great movie but let's be honest george lucas has no business being a director when they Brought in a new director, Ira... Irvin Kirshner. Irvin Kirshner. Empire. On the second movie. Was that his choice? Was that no. Was that the studios? The studio. That I don't know. But I do know that they got along well. Yeah, well, that was his professor. I know that. No, he wanted to direct it. The studio didn't want him to. So they pulled in Ira Kirshner. And um, Lucas was not happy about it. He actually, for years, decades, said that it was the worst Star Wars movie of them all. <laughs> and that's a disagree with every single well, person yeah, in history. He hated yeah. it. He thought it was terrible. He thought it was simply the worst thing in the universe. Once people started coming out saying that it's probably universally the best of all the three mm-hmm. films, then he kind of changed his tune. But prior to that, he hated every single bit about it. See, the thing about Lucas, I mean, hindsight for sure, mm-hmm. um, a wonderful imaginative storyteller. Yeah. I mean, what he came up with in his mm-hmm. mind mm-hmm. was beautiful. And very good at surrounding himself, especially for A New Hope, with some brilliant people, with the Kazdans, mm-hmm. who absolutely helped him rewrite that script. John mm-hmm. Morgan, um, yeah. music. Carrie Fisher was mm-hmm. a script doctor, and he let her, more in Empire, but he still let her... Um, That's where she got her start as being a script doctor. Really? Exactly. Yeah, up until that point, she hadn't been doing anything. She'd just been 
she was basically Debbie Reynolds' daughter. You know, he mm-hmm. told his he gave he explained his visions to Ralph McQuarrie, who did all those artist renderings, the paintings of his concept ideas for the vehicles for the uh, Ralph McQuarrie. And then who was the creature guy? The very uh, famous creature that, guy. That wasn't Harry Howe. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. Harry no, um, Roy, not Roy Baker. We have um, Google. Hold on. <laughs> but the, anyway, the creature designer for the Cantina. Mm-hmm. Um, Aliens and all that was very famous. Roy, Roy Baker, I want to say, but I don't think that's right. Uh, but and then the voicings of uh, Frank Oz in there was just. Who for... actually the Jim Henson was originally offered the role of and Yoda he said no. because he was too busy doing the mu- the mm-hmm. Muppet Caper. Yeah, the Great Muppet Caper. So he suggested Frank Oz. Yeah, good Yoda. suggestion, Jim. I mean, what, <laughs> can you imagine? I, I wonder what Jim would have done with Yoda. I'm sure it would have been good too. Hi ho! Yeah. Yoda yeah. the Green. It just turns into Kermit, basically. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking. I was thinking Rick Baker for the makeup. His makeup work in that was um, nominated, I believe, for there were awards eleven and people such. that worked on makeup, and there's one that was specific. Nick Malley was specific for the Cantina. Okay. Okay. So I don't really know. <laughs> well, I know Rick Baker is one of the names really attached to that. Yeah, since yeah. he was already but known over, for quite a few things. Overall, they kept a real um, c- continuity of the makeup. Mm-hmm. Though, I'll say that mm-hmm. with the aliens and all that, right? Because mm-hmm. it's not. I don't think that we had seen aliens like that before Star Wars, had we? I don't not think that not, good. Not, yeah, no, not well, that not good, and that not good that, 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 that that many. That very humanoid look with just a little different. There was no antennas or anything like yeah. that. And lots of different, lots of different variations of races. It, yeah, it was one of those first kind of sci-fi things where it really established the universe as a expansive place and gave a bunch of different, like it gave you a bunch of different feeling that there was way more worlds yeah, out the there. Yeah, the galaxy was full of exactly. populated yeah. worlds. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the whole point being that George Lucas knew how to surround himself with. Um, very talented people mm-hmm. that helped him make that first trilogy mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. Um, he should have done that later, but he, uh, <laughs> he didn't. Um, I think it just, the first three movies would have done better as like a novelization because there is a lot of the political aspect that I think just works better in that kind of medium as opposed to trying to fit it into, uh, into three movies. Sure. Sorry, one, two, and three. Yeah, so, okay. just just not talking about kind of getting off subject and just kind of talking more about how Lucas was a good storyteller, yeah. and I think that's where right. he fell through. Is they gave him too much freedom later right. because the original trilogy mm-hmm. did do so, so well, right. and they're like, "Here, do what you want," and well, he did do what he wants. Well, on top of that, let's let's also bring in that he was going through a divorce as well, mm-hmm. and that his wife wanted to get half of all of his earnings from Star Wars. Yeah. So that's kind of one of the re- f- rumored. I don't know if that's his intention but mm-hmm. he made he didn't he he messed with it so much so that it wouldn't do as well but it mm-hmm. still just did astronomical. i think he was going through a little bit of a nervous breakdown personally so but going back to what we were with the original three we can all agree he was a bad director but what made him a bad director i mean i know some of the stories but i'm sure some of you guys have heard some of them what was it that he was doing that was he was stubborn yeah the main yeah. reason that he was he didn't make the best directorial choices uh-huh. is because he was very stubborn. Yeah, he had a created vision, and that's what he wanted Which to do. Which is admirable. Yeah. But at the same time, if you have every intelligent, creative, credible person around you saying, mm-hmm. uh, and he did in Star Wars, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. He let the Kazdans get in there and go, look, man. <laughs> I mean, if you read the, <laughs> yeah. the, if you read the original, um, there's a book out that's got the original and then the Kazdan corrections mm-hmm. of Star Wars. It's amazing what they were able mm-hmm. to to, make to do to fix and all that um hmm. um alec guinness is famous for saying that if it weren't for the kazdans he probably would have like left yeah mid-production or mm-hmm. things like that because oh talk about a guy who hated star wars <laughs> alec, alec guinness mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i think lucas was just a kooky guy and it was hard for them to well you see you see like uh that his his uh first film thx 1140 or THX 1138. Yeah. That that comes from the mind of someone <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's insane. That's a deep yeah. cut. <laughs> but no, I'm, and well, I'm not saying that to try I to mean, sound cool. I'm like, no, no, no. But that is, that is insanity. 
Well, I also yeah. think Creed, he's. Uh-huh. I also think he's shown himself to be rather passive aggressive. Yes, and that's hard to deal with too. Mm-hmm. When mm-hmm. you deal with that, yeah. you know, when you're like the boss and you're passive aggressive. Yeah. Everybody under you starts wanting to strangle you. Mm-hmm. You know. And and the other thing is, I think we can we can obviously say based on how many times he's gone in and done changed. edits. Yeah. yeah. To A New Hope and Empire uh-huh. and Return of the Jedi over the years, he's an absolute perfectionist yeah. and nothing's ever fully completed nothing's ever gonna be in his finished. eyes. Yeah. I mean, that well, might be the one thing mm-hmm. about Disney plus Disney now owning Lucasville is he can't go in and change, and stuff, change stuff anymore. Thank goodness. Right. Well, he says, like, leave it be the way well, it is. And mm-hmm. I don't think he's for him. I think he's at least in the terms of star Wars, I'm not sure they're ever finished in his head. I mean, I can so. almost understand when technology caught up and he wanted to fix it, fix it. Yeah. Uh, and to be quite honest, in the special editions, he did improve the final X-Wing fight. He absolutely did. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the trench run was absolutely improved by the special edition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it, though. Actually, yeah. no, that's not true. The end of Return of the Jedi was also improved immensely. I think there's a yeah, difference the between everything. Yeah. Well, that's, that's just like cosmetics, just yeah. adding a few adding a few more X-wings or A-wings yeah. or that, to make to make the battle look more grandiose instead mm-hmm. of just yeah. yeah, it grandiosed it and it just there were some shots that were a little right. neater and Yeah. And, I think yeah. there's a difference between cleaning things up and yeah. just adding things for the sake well, of adding things. Well, yeah. well, let's do the elephant in the room, just Han shooting first. Like yeah. he yeah, the whole he didn't want his kids okay. thinking that he would that you know Han was a bad guy. Well, let's let's hit that for let's hit that for a second. Now, I know this is like geek folklore that everybody talks about. This when I was a kid, I never noticed it. I don't. You don't think about it. I never thought about about it. it. I don't know why everybody is. I mean, I I get it now that I'm older, but as Mm -hmm. kids, I don't get why everybody seems to have grasped on that so hard. Because that was something that was very visibly changed when he came out with the special editions. Because, I mean, literally, if I'm remembering correctly, is they digitally moved Harrison Ford in the scene so that his head yeah. darts out of the way yeah. of the shot over his head, the shot that never existed before. Right. It was literally just Han shooting Greedo. And that was the accepted way to do it. And I mean, no one so ever thought 20 he was. years rolls around and he's yeah. like, okay, we've got to change this so that mm-hmm. nobody thinks Han's a bad guy. You remember nobody th- thought Han was a bad because guy. Because Greedo had a gun to his head, yeah. gun exactly. to him anyway. See, I think a big person who influenced Lucas, and I think they may have influenced each other, was Spielberg. I think Spielberg had a lot to do with some of that mm-hmm. stuff because in E.T., he took out the guns mm-hmm. in E.T. because mm-hmm. he didn't want the guns in there. Um, they themselves were kicking themselves around for how violent the Temple of Doom, the second Indiana Jones movie it's was. Mm-hmm. It's not because of violence, it's because it's bad. Well, also, but no, but the violence in there, <laughs> I mean, yeah. was just oh. almost Call horror movie, you know, yeah. almost horror movie. And the kids are going to see this. And mm-hmm. I think that he just got on a shtick about. Oh my! You know that's my heroes can't be murderers. Yeah, kind of thing. I mean, it could also do with how much Star Wars exploded, and at that time, he was the one that was viewed as the responsible person for these characters. So if if you have all these people coming at not coming at you and saying that this is a bad guy, but in your head you're thinking, well, I'm I'm responsible for what these characters do and what they say, and you think that this displays him as a bad guy, I can see wanting to go back and yeah. change that before someone comes out and calls you out for it. Right. And he also got stuck in a conundrum because he made Star Wars and the first round of Star Wars fans were people like me mm-hmm. who were eight years old. Yeah. And f- our lives were changed and our childhoods were defined and all this mm-hmm. stuff. And we grew up waiting between the end of Return of the Jedi and the uh, special edition releases and then the EU books coming out. It's like that first round of fans um, kept him afloat. I mean, we, Mm -hmm. we, we kept him afloat. It's not called American graffiti ranch, you know? (laughs) Right. And we, we were devoted and loyal to him and he got it in his mind that Star Wars was for kids. That's why he ran into Mm -hmm. so many problems in the prequels. Oh, I made this for kids. Okay. Fair enough. But, you forgot about all these people who made you rich. Yeah. And he oh, it's just what he does. It's it's bizarre. Uh, 
Uh, I'll give him because that's the only way I can actually justify the first three is that mm. it well it's it's almost like he he wanted to do episode one as a and i know we're getting off a, off topic here but episode one is for kids it's to get it's a gateway drug into getting into the star wars universe mm-hmm. episode two is for the teenagers we skip that one and then we go right to three and then that's that's it's like almost like harry potter where it gets darker and darker and then you see anakin turn into yeah, yeah. what he mm. becomes and then you go into Four, five, and six, which are for the adults. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just that he he forgot who was bankrolling him. Right. Yeah. You know? I I think that's that that's actually one of my irritations with Star Wars fans because I mean, yes, he should he should make it for the kids. He made it for you when you were a kid. You don't get a say anymore. Yeah. You know. I mean, I understand. I can, you that. don't have to see it. You don't have to see it anymore of them. That, yeah. That's and fine. I think- I think that if he wants to make a kids movie, he should make it as a kids yeah. movie mm. because that's what he made Star Wars as. Oh, he mm-hmm. did, but you know, you're going to get the backlash from the people who bankrolled you. Well, I, and I think all those people can shut up. Too. Do you think <laughs> the original that's trilogy why he made the the Ewoks? Yeah, that's why. That's it, right. That is yeah. the, the Ewok specials. They were for the kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the first two, New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, are those those aren't kids movies. Did he no, he reacted to make Return of a Jedi a kids movie because, like well, he PB Jason said, said in, kids gravitated right. towards the original Star yeah, Wars. He man. always said Star Wars were for kids. Really, his, even his Luke original acted three. like a nine year old. Yeah, uh-huh. mm. I'm gonna go get, get, get some power converters. Which he I mean, like again, a that is what happened. It was the, again those kids uh-huh. are the ones that became the the, the the fans. The fans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I can understand why he hated Empire Strikes Back so much because that was that was a full oh, adult yeah, no. mm-hmm. to to a certain extent a full adult movie where it was dark and you know good guys didn't win like and they, it did they got something their butt handed to them. it did something unheard of in 1980. Say I love you. It, I know. No, it ended on a <laughs> cliffhanger. True. Yeah. That was such a controversy. Uh-huh. People went nuts that that ended. I on remember. A I, actually, I. That's I remember seeing that, and I'm like, and I didn't realize the effect it was because I was still five, six years old at the time, eighty, mm-hmm. so I was four. So yeah, that was movie critics went insane. Do you want some I, trivia I, and about I never that? cared because I was like, Star Wars what? blasters, cool. Mm-hmm. Some what? trivia about Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, go for it. The novelization came out a month before the film You're did. Kidding. And they did nothing to cover up the fact that Darth Vader was Luke's father. What? So anyone what? who read the novel before they went into the movie. I already knew the twist. Why, is whoa, that, whoa, why whoa, does that whoa, not whoa. get covered now? That, that was Darth because Vader's Luke Skywalker's father? No. Oh, spoilers, guys. <laughs> if you haven't seen this 50 year old movie. Because it's not back 50. then, reading. I'm not 50 yet. <laughs> <laughs> back then, reading was for nerds, so they weren't worried so about how many Star people saw it. Not no. back then, though. No, yeah. it was not an. Was it, also it was the, a global there, phenomenon back there then. There was also the television uh, Billy D. Williams interview where um, he said it, too. Really? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, it was pretty much a given. Nowadays, and then Disney the other would have sniped him the for other, it. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> other really interesting thing about that that I find is that David Pross, the guy who's in Darth Vader's suit, mm-hmm. didn't, didn't know. know what he was saying. Neither did James Earl Jones. <laughs> James Earl Jones until the very, to the very yeah, last. But, no, yeah. David Prowse didn't know it until he saw the completed film. <laughs> He's like, oh, and then he nice. went oh. to George Lucas and said, if you had told me this from the beginning, I would have changed the way I acted through the first two films. He said, that's why I didn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he didn't know until they were in the movie theater. I believe everybody was told that Obi Wan killed his father. Uh-huh. Right, that was yeah. the what? Yeah, what it was when Mark Hamill was told like right at the when and he was filming it. And if so you that, listen to so his that interview, he said was he like, told Carrie like, Fisher, well, and he was wait, afraid she was going to Yeah, mm-hmm. and he told Carrie Fisher, and she told everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, that, that cocaine was a hell of a drug back then. <laughs> I mean, come on. But part of the magic of that original trilogy, we haven't really addressed this yet, but I think it's worth doing. Is that cast mm-hmm. okay? That cast and that chemistry that did come out of nowhere, mm-hmm. you know, between all the characters, really. Yeah. Um, but there's the three. It's the Luke, uh, Han, Han and but Luke. even but even the droids and, and Chewbacca and all. I mean, there was yeah. yeah, there was there was a magic to that. Carrie Fisher was afraid that that uh, George Lucas was going to fire her every day because she didn't think she was pretty enough. Well, they 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 sent her to a fat farm before. Yeah. To lose 10 pounds. Yeah, she Jeez. thought she wasn't pretty enough, so she was in Insane. fear. The whole the whole filming of the first episode of A New Hope mm-hmm. that she was going to get fired. 
because she wasn't pretty enough. She wasn't Hollywood pretty because she didn't look like the women in Hollywood mm-hmm. at that time period. Anyways. And I think that's why, like PB and Jason was saying, that's why it worked out so well because, to my knowledge, none of them were known. No. Mm-mm. So Harrison Ford was Harrison a little Ford bit, was, yeah. but he, he was, was American, but he was originally a carpenter on it, correct? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So I mean. This guy that oh, was Alec, just a carpenter, Alec Guinness. yeah. Alec Guinness. Alec Guinness. So, so, so was uh, Peter. Cushing. Peter Mayhew. No, I'm sorry. Peter uh, Tarkin. Yeah. Peter, Peter Cushing. Cushing. Yeah. yeah, but he did a bunch of B vampire movies, Hammer, yeah. Dracula. So <laughs> you have this cast of people who aren't necessarily like world class actors. Maybe a few of them are, but you bring them into this movie that just explodes, and that's part of the charm of it. Yes, mm-hmm. is that they're not. There's, there's an they're innocence. not over hamming it up exactly. It was, there's an innocence, innocence of it. Right. They're not mm-hmm. over hamming it up because they're big actors. They're just acting the part. And now, was, Leia yeah. did though. When when she would she'd lose the accent, the British accent would come and go and come and go. That was her being a ham. She lost that by the second movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I think? You know no what direction. I think about that though? She was playing it up as a member of the Imperial Senate, mm-hmm. and when that. Whole, we're on a diplomatic mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when that yeah. whole when that whole guy's got you know busted and she was a rebel, she just started talking like she talks. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That was lightning in a bottle. I mean, I can't think of, I honestly can't think of another movie or franchise in my lifetime that captured magic like that, and and ended up just running away and being mm-hmm. like this phenomenon. Well. You know? You know, and that that kind of segues into this. There's like a, and the geek, geeks of the world can all say it. There's a religious type reverence to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why? I mean, this and this is you know, forty years later. Mm-hmm. Why? In Australia, if I'm not mistaken, they Church of the uh, Jedi. Church of the Church Jedi. Of the Jedi. You, can, yeah. you can, yeah, it's a religion mm-hmm. for them now. Yeah. Well, and I'm not talking, you know, religion per se, but I mean, there is. There's a reverence. There's a reverence mm-hmm. to it. It's because oh, yeah. people. For people who grew up with it, it was something that changed their lives. Yes. And they don't want that to change. It was defining. Yes. In many ways. It was defining for the people, for the industry, for so many things. And now people hold on to that just like people would hold on to any any religion that they well, believe in well, even the action figures and stuff like yeah how, mm-hmm. how many of us like played with the star wars oh gosh mm-hmm. like, yes and mm-hmm. made our own stories and my made it you know had our own things bike. i think well and i think <laughs> me and me and uh, uh pb can actually uh, uh, go with this is that uh um the, with the last Jedi, that's why we were so mad about that. It was because we had it already. This this was something sacred to us, and then just kind of he del- he delivered this this. That's not Luke. Show, but huh? we, said we've had this discussion yeah. before. Yeah. But even I don't think you could go into even before that, we felt we we felt that in, we, the, felt that in yeah. the prequels too. Right, right, yeah. right. You know, because I mean, uh, how many pre tickets did you buy to Phantom Menace? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I bought three. Yeah, you know. Oh, every, every single like, episode. Like, you know? I was like, all right, all right. We'll give them the first one. All right, second one. Oh, you know, man. the trailer for Phantom Menace was the most viewed trailer in the world for a while. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you know? we hadn't we hadn't had we hadn't had a, a little fix of Star Wars for a long for time. For a long so time it's since that, the special yeah. editions. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. Mm-hmm. And now and we're giving it too much. <laughs> but that's uh, another. That, yeah. That's another. That's the next episode. We'll talk yeah. about that I've in seen the next two trailers and I was done. I'm like, nope. Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a, a, a good talk about Disney and Star Wars that we could do in the next episode yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I think that's just, that's why for the, for that conversation that just happened right now, to answer your question, Dub, that's why it's become almost like a religious thing because mm-hmm. it touched so many people and it was just revered all around for so long. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. oh, we're actually getting into grandkids now with, yeah. with this. Now. Generations like, uh, of Star yeah, Wars. Like, mm-hmm. This, mm-hmm. this. If, if there's one story that will be told throughout the generations, it's the Star Wars. Yep. <laughs> I can't the wait Skywalker to show the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I, and you know, on this kind of religious thing, there's a religious philosophy behind Star Wars that any religion it, they take from everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Christianity's got mm-hmm. a big, big dose of it. Buddhism, mm-hmm. uh, Taoism. Mm-hmm. I mean. 
Well, you, it goes it goes down. Well, yeah. let's. I'd, I'd, I'd be that's, for, but that's what made people connect with it. I think. Well, it's there's there's a book by Joseph Campbell too that that's what George Lucas actually oh, like referenced journey. with the yeah the hero's journey mm-hmm. where it starts with somebody that's just kind of just plain and ordinary and he gets thrown into an extraordinary experience mm-hmm. and yeah. him him kind of coming to terms and then becoming mm-hmm. the hero that he was destined to be. Too, any so. good movie and any good writer keeps a copy of the hero's journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On their desk, yeah, because mm-hmm. a lot. You'd be surprised how many movies actually follow the heroes. Oh, almost all of them. Yeah, because yeah. it's it's, yeah. it's yeah. just basic framework. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's let's talk the uh, the other big dog for uh, star for um, sci fi would be Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Why does Star Wars and Star Trek people hate each other? You know so the much? funny thing about I remember when you wrote that question. Mm-hmm. And I think it. I think that's more how it used to be. The problem now is Star Wars and Star Wars fans hate each other. Yeah, <laughs> that's more. Well, that's, that's more yeah. of the big. That's what thing I was right talking now. about when it first started. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. more of the big thing now. But going back to the Star Trek Star Wars thing that I guess still exists. I don't know. It was so <laughs> overshadowed by yeah. the Last Jedi. But um, anyway, <laughs> no. Um, the whole thing about how um, Star Trek is a little bit more based in science mm-hmm. and. The Trekkies are critical of the space wizards and the mm-hmm, you know yeah. the space magic and a lot of the lack of science that's in Star Wars. Um, that's where a lot of that comes from. Yeah. It's almost like a, a jock versus nerd, or, or science versus religion. Yeah, basically, yeah. like faith, faith and science. Mm-hmm. So, and but you're, but you're right. Like over the over the decade, the decades past, and they it's not kinda, like they've kind of melding it. Yeah. I mean, they're like, okay, you know, I, I like Star Wars and I like Star Trek, but I do like one more than the other. Yeah. I, can, I have a preference for them, but I enjoy them both yeah. sure. in different ways. Mm-hmm. And kind of J.J. Abrams kind of melded that as well, too, doing by both. By doing both. Yeah, by doing both. <laughs> like, hey, guys, mm-hmm. it's okay. I didn't I didn't melt. <laughs> yeah. Because right, I did right. a Star Trek, uh, sh- uh, uh, Star Trek movie, you know? But if you go back to the originals. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, but why... I don't understand the hatred for... I mean, they're both, they're both sci-fi. You know, that without that to me was the first geek argument that I think mm-hmm. everyone yeah. had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it just kind of shows the thing about fandoms is mm-hmm. fandoms are great and fandoms suck. Well, because yeah. because there is the element of fandoms that just wants to fight. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, you have a when you have a, a geek culture that existed because how long did Star Trek exist before Star Wars? Sixty eight. So yeah. 68 and 77 was So you already had years. an established fan base who already loved this thing and were you could say were ostracized for it because back then being into space and and nerd stuff was not like it was not frowned upon but people didn't didn't gravitate towards it as and much. And quite honestly before Star Wars Star Trek kind of did sit at the top of the mountain. I mean, mm-hmm. as far as sci fi, yeah, went. there was Flash Gordon, there was stuff before yeah. that, but as far as like. Planet. So you had this group of people who were into to something Lost that they loved, space. and people didn't really recognize them for it. And then you had Star Wars come out, and that was, like we said before, it was a global phenomenon when that mm-hmm. came out. Everyone, it didn't, it didn't matter who you were, Star Wars was the big thing. So I think you have a little bit of jealousy and resentment to the those original Trekkies. That's a really the, who the were like thing. That, I've yeah. been I've liked this forever. I've I've already liked this for a number of years, like and now you became geeks. Yes, yeah. exactly. And now you release this one thing, and everybody loves it. Like that's not fair. Right. And I think that's where you had that original clash of and, Trekkies versus Star and Wars. is adored too. While while the other while the uh, the Trekkies were like almost ridiculed. That's yeah, kind of, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then it's like, well, we've been doing this. We've been doing sci-fi mm-hmm. for all this time, and now Star yeah. Wars comes out, and yeah, I was a nerd, and now it's cool. <laughs> yeah, like, can, yeah, I can see that. There must have been slightly older kids than. Me because I liked Star Trek, mm-hmm. you know, before you, Star Wars came out. You could yeah. probably distill it down to a couple of different phrases too. Star <laughs> Wars is essentially good versus evil. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, all it opera. is. Uh-huh. Space good opera. versus yeah. evil. Mm-hmm. Star War Star Trek is not just good versus. No, evil. it's a lot of great. It's man versus man. It's yeah. man versus nature. Man and versus himself. Exploration. It, it's exploration. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. yeah. So I think you've got. I think we've talked about this multiple times. People like battles and fighting yes. and 
sword play mm-hmm. and in Star Wars, you get all that in an elevated level because it is this space fantasy. Yeah, mm-hmm. phasers are boring. You don't have... A, yeah, I mean, it's it's very cool when Jim is, is demanding that they go to Warp 9, but mm-hmm. it's not nearly as cool when Admiral Piet is blowing up Alderaan with the Death Star. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. So there's only one way we can, like... Actually, define and this. I love them both. So Roddenberry <laughs> and Lucas got to fight. That's all. It's, it's right. Put them in a cage. I think Roddenberry would take him, even though he's been dead for so many years. He probably would. That old, um, <laughs> the MTV <laughs> show, Celebrity Death, Death Match. Oh, I mean, <laughs> bring that back. <laughs> and on that, let's go on to our listener feedback. And now, let's see what all of our geek rock stars have to say. Feedback we had so many we had to cut a lot. A lot. Um, we asked the question: um, Who? What is your favorite Star Wars moment or line from the originals? Um, and we got I think more than fifty answers. Mm-hmm. And we had to cut these down to about ten. Yeah. So um, if your if your name didn't get read, you can blame Courtney. Go yes, ahead, Courtney. Please, <laughs> please let me. Yeah. Ah. Thanks everybody for all of your feedback. I just had to cut it down way 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 way. So the first one is Joel Hangstiller. I'm sorry hey, if Joel, I'm saying I know your him. name wrong. His favorite line is, "You will find that many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view." Said by the wonderful Obi Wan Kenobi. Nice. Sean Critchfield gave us, "Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering." Said by, who's got it? Anybody? Yoda. Oh, Yoda. Yoda. Next, TC. Um, the, the voice, voice of, the show. of the show is, aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper? One of my <laughs> he likes that one because he's short. <laughs> Anything that Leia says is probably one of my favorites. Kimberly Romaine gives us, you will only, you will find only what you bring in. Also, by the great green Yoda. Mm-hmm. That is a really profound mm-hmm. statement. He's got a lot of those, actually. Uh, next one is Dino from the huh? podcast. I let Dub say that because he likes to. I do. <laughs> Almost as much as I like saying crystal midget. <laughs> Who's the more foolish, the fool or the fool who follows him? Great. Also what? by oh, Obi Wan. All these Jedi. It's mm-hmm. the Jedi that have all the quotes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And well, like, he wrote them like that on purpose. And yeah. And then the the last one that I've got is Alan Huskins Jr. And this is actually a combo. It's Luke. I don't believe it. And Yoda saying that, that is, is why you, you fail. fail. So thank you for all your listener feedback, and I'm sorry if I didn't read yours. We appreciate your answers. There was just so many. Yes, there is a <laughs> literal metric and a, poop ton. And a lot of people had the same answer. So Kosh has a hand up. Yes, one. Kosh. I got one. Okay. Luke, carry. Yes, that's a good oh, one. Oh, yeah, too. that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, now, oh. Wow. Before, uh, before that, like, another funny one. I didn't realize this until much. I was much older. I was probably in my 30s, and somebody told me about the stormtrooper who hits his head on the door. Oh, yep. oh yeah. yeah. Bow. Uh-huh. I did not know that. Yep, and I think I saw it on Facebook. I'm like, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Watched it, oh, and I'm like, totally bonked. holy yep. crap, think, he nailed his head. And yeah. <laughs> Star Wars was the first place that I ever learned about the Wilhelm scream. Is everyone familiar yeah. with that? Oh, yes. 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 that yes. That's yeah. the first place that most people it's got It's the a, goofy scream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Uh, but that's in 436 mm-hmm. different instances that I know of. Mm-hmm. They <laughs> try to put it in every. It, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And that's, you, you have to know. It's should, just the rule. Should we explain <laughs> the Luke Carey thing for those people who maybe don't, don't okay. know? <laughs> At the end of A New Hope, after they have destroyed the Death Star, they have, they're in the hangar. Luke is pulling off his helmet. Carrie Fisher, or Princess Leia, is running up to him. She screams out, Luke. He sees her and screams out, Carrie. Dead, like... It, it is in the film in, that way. Even in the remasters? <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and you're like, no, that's not right. It's the same thing with, like, the, the, the Stormtrooper helmet. And I'm like... It's there. Yep, it's there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> let's move on to our main event. Now it's time for... The main event. And today we did our top five favorite characters from the original three. Um, I think we go from obscure to not. We go all over the board. So, um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. So my number five is a guy named Niem Nub. 
which is the monkey guy from Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I he I don't know why he just really captured my imagination. I I loved the, his that look he had. It's like he was definitely evolved from a monkey. He was uh, mm-hmm. Night Numb, right? He Nine was Nine the yeah. co-pilot with uh, Lando. Mm-hmm. And Return of the Jedi and the Falcon. And he had a really cool voice. I remember that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of that that weird laugh in it. Just, he the guy, the actor that played him just passed away. Like, oh, well, he did oh, three, four years ago. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Wah, wah, wah. We love you, Nub <laughs> <laughs> uh, My number five is the uh, most important person that uh, took on the Death Star, and that is Jack Tano Porkins. Yeah, Porkins. Porkins. <laughs> you would not have had a successful mission without Porkins. You and gotta love a, a, a fat oh, X-wing fighter. Fat yeah. Well, he the was, thing that's really sad about Jeb Porkins <laughs> is that um, you know the X-wings were supposed to be too small to be hit by the turbo lasers, mm-hmm. um, but unfortunately, Jeb's slightly modified fatter X-wing <laughs> was hit by the turbo lasers. Mm, That's just terrible. Poor guy. Pimp my X-wing. <laughs> oh, wow. Yo, dog, I heard you like flying an X-wing. I put an X-wing in your X-wing. <laughs> my number five is Boba Fett. Boba Long? Fett. Mine, Even mine is number four. Plays thinks he's a numbskull. He's a numbskull. That guy. Uh, you know he what? did nothing good. This in the guy trilogy. was in the movies for a total of like three minutes, and he just captured the imagination. You know what? Before he, before all the other stuff came out, he's he in captured more the imagination of, watch, of everybody. He's in more of it if you watch the like the new. The I don't know. Special no, edition, I understand that, but, but yeah. originally I don't he looked, understand. He looked that. awesome. Okay, that's, that was yeah, that's the cool thing. Is he looked awesome. He looked cool. He had a. He had a he, he was silent. He hardly said a thing. Yeah, all yeah. I think he said He never said a thing put right. until the, the edits. Hold. No, he spoke in him. Yeah. No, no, he said, he yeah, had, he's better off. He like two he's, not, he's not good to be dead. Well, and I thought that was... Captain Solo in the no, cargo hold. In. Well, what no. really sold uh, him is Han Solo's line, Boba Fett, and like literally that's the only person that panicked him. Yep. Because he was always cool. He and then the second cool. that happened, it was like... But he really captured the imagination of everybody. But one I, of the best things about the EU cool. is the EU gave Boba Fett credibility. Right. Which we'll talk well, about it's, next. It's, well, it's kind of like okay. like him and Darth Maul. Or I put them in the, the same category. They both looked awesome in yeah. the movies, mm-hmm. but they were just wasted. <laughs> waste, just drastically wasted. At least yeah. Darth Maul did something. Huh? That guy just fell into a pit. Oh, Boba stop. Fett. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> Kaj, what's your but, number but, four? But in the EU, he survives. He blasts his way out of it. So. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll talk about that yeah. next. Yeah, we'll talk about that <laughs> uh, My number five, it's one of my favorite, favorite characters. Not my all-time favorite, but I love Salacious B. Crumb. He's nah! It's Gonzo in Star Wars. The, no, he is the Nelson of Star Wars. Because oh. that's all he does is laugh at people. Oh, it's true. That's and funny. then. And then I know we're we're jumping off, but then the Mandalorian. When he's he's, he's on a shish I, I literally I scared my family because I laughed out loud so hard. They're like, Some what's of us going haven't on? I'm like, seen episode it, four yet. It's, it's, it's one. episode one, one dear. It's first episode. Yes. Yeah, yeah, where they're the spit, spit barbecuing that a that's yeah. salacious. Crumb. Well, it's not him. It's, it's one his of his race. Yeah, it's one of his. But we all imagine it's him. And they're seeing the other ones like looking at like. Oh crap! I'm about yeah. to get scared. Yeah, that's so, but Tara is convinced that that other one is saying "mom," and it makes her sad. Oh. So we watched it twice, oh. and it makes her sad. It is pretty it boring. Is a, it is a sad scene. Oh, it is a very sad. But no, Salicious <laughs> Crumb died on the barge. Right. That's, yeah. Yeah, but I see that one of the scared. I'm like, yeah, Do who's laughing sure? now? Yeah, we know. I don't know. We don't know. He could have got away and then yeah. got barbecued later. And who cares? Go ahead. Okay, my my choices really aren't obscure, to be honest. So my number five would be Chewbacca. He is um, one of two characters in Star Wars that I think is the Sam Gamgee of Star Wars, and he's one of them. Yeah. Um, loyal, you know, loyal to a fault. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's a dog. He's a dog man. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, one of the things I love, I know we're going to get into this more, but one of the things I love about Solo is I liked how they expanded a little bit on their relationship, how it how it started. Right, in the movie, um, yeah. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> yeah, I've always loved Chewbacca. Gentle and not gentle when it was necessary. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. So my number four is this is kind of a weird one, but the Sarlacc pit before the remakes, after the re- after the remakes when he's Seymour the plant. No, that sucks. But the original Sarlacc pit was just so just. It was almost its own character. It was truly frightening. The the spikes because you couldn't really see what was in there. Mm-hmm. It's like. 
Yeah, the folklore <laughs> that you could hear behind mm-hmm. it, it was just and amazingly It doesn't scary. want to get dissolved mm-hmm. for a thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how does that work? You know? yeah. It's a hole with teeth. <laughs> yeah, pretty awesome. I finally uh, got rid of that one dumb not, character. Oh, not going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, my number four um, is the Womp Rats, okay. who without... Luke would have never been able to obtain the skill <laughs> that he needed to take down the Death Star. Do we ever see a Womp Rat? Less than two meters. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you ever yeah. see a Womp Rat? I don't... Yeah, it's yeah. in the first... It's in New Hope. It's in the very beginning. It's... And it could be... Just in the remake? They, or? Yeah, it's oh. in the, the added-in scenes. The rated R gritty version. When he's going into... When he's going in... <laughs> to when Mos Eisley. Yep. They're going into Mos Eisley to meet... Um, Chewbacca and Solo the first time, and you'll see like these little rat creatures scurry away. Those, those are, are womp rats. rats. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, he used to target those in his T-16 back home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're not much bigger than that. Nah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, my number four is uh, Boba Fett, so we can, we can move up. Yeah, ba- yep. Boba Fett. Yay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Mandalorian. <clears throat> my number four would be Yoda, hands down. Um, I, I remember seeing Empire Strikes Back. I did know that even though he was pretending... At first, I didn't know that was Yoda. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love the the transformation from <laughs> to the Jedi that he became while he was training Luke. Mm-hmm. And, you know, judge me by my size, do you? I mean, he was just awesome philosopher. And I have to note that um, in that recent, more recent thing with the um, seagulls, the seagulls right. uh, thing mm-hmm. uh, just brings a whole new dimension to Yoda that I absolutely just <laughs> love. Yeah, well, even just with because he's he's I'm just spoiler alert. It's my, he's my number one. But just with when Luke tried to like lift up his um, uh, X-wing, X-wing and then he's like, I can't. It's too hard. And then you just see Yoda like, hold my beer. And yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> yep. huh? And that's why you failed. <clears throat> and that's why I failed. <laughs> yep. So Yoda was fantastic. Yes. Yeah. No shooting. My number three is a guy named Max Rebo. Do you guys know who Max Rebo is? Yeah, he's the elephant keyboard player. He's the mm-hmm. keyboard elephant player. I don't know why. I. Uh, he even made it into Star Tours later on. Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. Something about that character I've always loved. That's the circular keyboard and <laughs> just watching him rock out. I'm like, this this is my tribe right here. And mm-hmm. the that's who I related to more than anything mm-hmm. in Star Wars is, you know, those musician guys. I loved it. Sice Noodles band, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, my number three is the Jawas. Those okay. pesky little... A lot of people Pop hate Pop. the Jawas. Yeah, oh, man. Like, there's a lot of feedback on that. They're, they're the, the worst kind of... I don't know if you want to call them people or creatures or whatever. Things. But things. Um I just I think they're hilarious. They're awesome. They're yeah. grimy little <laughs> yeah. horse traders. Uh-huh. I love them. They were awesome. <laughs> and they were actually before he tried to make things cute, they were cute. Yeah. Because they were little, mm-hmm. you know. But they were also They like, were cute, but at the same time they were, were disturbing. Disturbing. Yeah, yeah. Scary. <laughs> but in a good so they were cute in a really yeah. good, disturbing uh-huh. way. Yeah. Yes. So my number four is Grand Moff Tarkin, if anybody was really curious about that. But my number I three... Oh, did we pass you did I? I'm so you sorry. Did. So, oh, no. But my number three is is Luke Skywalker. Because okay. I like... Luke Starkiller? The farm... That's one of the questions in the next Oh, trivia. the next one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, my number three is Luke Skywalker, because I love that farm boy going on to save the universe and mm-hmm. i really think mark hannibal may, might have actually been my very first crush to be honest all right most girls liked lay was mine Harrison so it Ford. Works. mine was mark hamill you watched corvette summer not long after that didn't you i didn't because i was no i was not even born when the first movie came out ah <laughs> yeah so so you had you had car accident face it wasn't really until yeah it wasn't really until return of the jedi where wow. i was like yeah he had, had a car accident <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. um that's why they have the wampa mm-hmm. scene in empire was to cover up the scars to give an excuse Sorry, that's <laughs> yeah. random that was gonna be a trivia question that's why i know that um yeah i didn't w- actually i didn't start watching until i was about five or six and that was by then all three of them were out mm-hmm. so Sorry, you can cut that. I, I was, so we're not skipping anybody? Okay, good. Mm-hmm. No, nope, you're good now. Oh, sorry. I'm just trying to be courteous. I feel so bad right now. No, it's fine. All right, so my number three is C-3PO Human Cyborg Relations and his counterpart, R2-D2. 
You can't have one without the other. And honestly, whenever it's you true. see three people without R2D2, I like how so you were doing the voice. Huh? Oh. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Mm. I, if, if you. I, I know it's on the internet somewhere because I've seen it. I saw it like many, many years ago. But there is a. Um, a, uh, a post, a blog about the most important character in all of Star Wars fandom R2-D2. is R two D two because he knows everything from mm-hmm. Episode yeah. one all the way up to now because uh-huh. he has he's never been memory wiped. He's never, wiped. Been, he's never yeah. been memory wiped, and he actually is sentient enough that he sometimes he pushes people into the right doing the things, things. Yeah. and then Chewbacca is the same way because he kind of mm-hmm. is. Yeah, whole, yeah. Whole, whole I have to. Too. I have to disagree with what you just said about how when they're separate they suck. Okay, because <clears throat> well, some of C three PO's greatest lines and greatest moments are in Empire Strikes Back when Luke goes off with R two to Dagobah, 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 mm-hmm. Dagobah. I always Dagobah. mess that up. Dagobah, Dagobah. and C three PO goes with Han and Leia through the adventure, through the asteroids, through mm-hmm. to Bespin. I think that again they they stand out on their own. Mm-hmm in those situations as some of the best moments for sure in but, my opinion but when, but when they're together it's just it's just comedy yeah, gold. yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's Abbott and costello yeah. yeah 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 we're trying to save han from the bounty hunter yes <laughs> uh, my number three is r2d2 <laughs> okay. on his own um who i consider to be again the sam gam g of mm-hmm. star wars um they would have been dead a few times if not for that little mech astromech droid yeah. And just just his tenacity, I guess you could say, just his yeah. Well, like, he stopped the garbage shoot. He fixed the hyperdrive. He did all kinds of good stuff. I mean, and, and his arrogance is is pr- like he <laughs> like you know he's saying some just foul oh he swears stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, no, yeah. foul, foul mouth character, character, character in yeah. Star Wars, and that's yeah. brilliant that they actually made a character that does nothing but beeps. Yeah, yeah. and right. you know what he's saying. Right, that's yeah. amazing. You know what he's saying in right. your mind. <laughs> you watch your language. Yeah. <laughs> If you're offended by what he says, then you are probably have a really dirty mind. <laughs> hey, he just told him off. <laughs> My number two is one Admiral Akbar, the fish guy. It's a trap. That, he was one of the Star Wars characters I got when I was young, and I just the just a very cool voice, very commanding presence. The Mon Calamari. And you didn't oh, I was about to throw that trivia that, at him. The Mon Calamari. Mon Calamari. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they are. He's, he's a squid. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I understand Mon that, but it's that. Uh, yeah, Mon Calamari. Ridiculous. Yeah, Mon Calamari. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's he's such a he's such a commanding character. Looking that oh. silly, but you don't care. Nope. Oh, yeah. Mate. Well, and I think Courtney would would agree with you. just his his. Thank goodness that the EU is not canon anymore because he. Yeah, he's, it's, he's got a very he's got a rough <laughs> life after. Well, what I was going to say though Jedi. was, like Boba Fett, <laughs> well, the they, EU gave Akbar a lot of well, and they dis- dimension. They right, destroyed, right. They destroyed Cal- the Calamria, however they say it. They destroyed uh, Cal- his planet. It right, just, uh-huh. Mon Cal. Yeah, Mon Cal. Well, on top of that, well, his his um, uh, unbeknownst to him, but his betrayal because mm-hmm. he. Uh, yeah, then he got he was arrested and he mm-hmm. yeah, he, I think he mm-hmm. died in jail if I'm not mistaken. And the rebels would not have had yeah. the rebels would not have had heavy cruisers mm-hmm. without mm-hmm. Force Rising, mm-hmm. that's right. the Moncals. Yep. Yeah. And he's one of those characters too that like we said before, when you see him, you're like, All yeah. right, this is a very expansive universe. Like right. there's yeah. a mm-hmm. lot of different races. Yeah, there. he's he's mm-hmm. he's like a boba fed. You're like, I get it. Yeah. Cool. You know, he, he doesn't do much, but I respect this guy. Mm-hmm. You know? You you have your own backstory, no matter if you've read the EU or not. Right. That that I see. Mm-hmm. That's where all my characters are from because I like their backstory that I gave them mm-hmm. yeah. because they gave you that much, and it's amazing how yeah. they did that in these movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number two is Greedo uh, because I think he needs, he needs retribution from being killed in cold blood. <laughs> Han should not have done that. But um, he's but he's a bounty hunter. Mm. <laughs> he's not a very good. He's one. not very no, good. because he's um, dead not. now. And <laughs> this is it's legends now, but I wish they would roll it into the original canon. But there was children. There was a a story that said that the reason why Greedo didn't like Han is because that was Greedo's vest. Mm. When they were kids, and Han stole it from him. Hmm. Have you ever read Tales from the Mos Eisley Cantina? I have not. You I heard should. that was good. Yeah, uh, you'll get a 
fabulous Greedo story really? in that book, yes. Awesome. Mm. My number two is Lando Calrissian, because Billy D. Williams is awesome. Hello. Cool. Cool. Yeah. With a Colt 45. And... Let's be honest. <laughs> Lando, pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that's kind of his whole shtick, Pretty isn't cool. It? Yeah. Yep. Is, is he cooler than Han? Yes. Yes. Okay. 100%. Oh, um, wow. Uh, yeah, Han? actually. The table yeah, is split. Is. The table is, <laughs> yeah, I, is. Would not, I would not define Han as cool. No, per he's se. not. He's you, a, know, you know what? I, no, I a, agree with you. you know, yeah, I do too. Lando yeah, is, Lando is, is cooler cool. than Han. Yeah. Because Lando is kind of like the. Yeah, he's a smuggler, and he's 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 like Han in many ways. But if you go with the EU, like Han's the one that's always getting him in trouble. Well, yeah, but because he's, he's like, yeah, come on, we're gonna have fun here, and he's like, all right, you I'll can't go have do it. Billy oh, D. Williams and not be cool. I know, right? <laughs> so, so uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. All right, so my number two, obviously, Darth Vader. <laughs> can't you know? And I can't. Yeah. Someone said, what was that in my ear? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a sweet nothing, all right? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, just when I when I first saw him in A New Hope, and he just kind of walks through and just kind of assess everything and just keeps walking. It's like, okay. This, you knew who the bad guy that, was. That was a, and then on top of that, he he's he's crushing the guy. Force like, crushing necks, force choking, left yeah. and right. Yeah. He's, and then just, mm-hmm. I mean, just, just his whole, like even before the, for episode one, two, and three, just like in Empire Strikes Back and just kind of throwing him for a loop. And then at the end, just his whole redemption um, thought just... Somebody that's that evil could actually have a little bit of good at him and then turn back to the to the light side. The only thing that I really am, um, uh, the, the only bone I have to pick with that is, unfortunately, they took the old actor from Return of the Jedi and they put Hayden Christensen in there for the new one. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. like, no. He, he didn't look right. He got no. he got old, and then when he died, that's what he looked like. Yep. So it should have been the original actor, not Hayden right. Christensen. I think I it's agree. disrespectful to the original It is. Actor yeah. well. no, nothing against Hayden Christensen, because he didn't, I mean, it wasn't his no, choice. There was a lot against Hayden Christensen, but that wasn't his that, decision. That, not, that wasn't his choice. Yeah. But, yeah. For, but for that, it should have stayed as the original actor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. All that. right, my number two would be, I'd, I'll call them the big three, <laughs> and that would be Leia, Luke, and Han. Um, from the moment that I'm Luke Skywalker, I'm here to rescue you. Uh, what a great plan. You didn't think about getting out into the garbage chute, fly boy, all of that, um, established how wonderful those three were going to be mm-hmm. together throughout the trilogy. And they were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Outstanding. So my number one, and uh, this is another one of those because of the backstory that I created mm-hmm. is the Rancor and the Rancor Keeper. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that that incredibly mournful scene from the Keeper after the Rancor dies. Mm-hmm. It's like, you should not feel any sympathy for this guy. He's just garbage, but wow. You have you sympathy. read Tales from <laughs> no, Jabba's Palace? <laughs> Tales from Jabba's Palace gives you a great Rancor, Rancor Keeper story. If, oh. you're, if you're curious. Because he, he, yes. he raised him when he was a baby, right? Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah. And so no. it was like his pet. Actually, no. Oh, okay. But it still gives you a great story. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that that is, that one is that's one of my favorite characters. Your, period. Your oh, okay. Just yeah. for that reason, I say it just gave me. It, I have my own greatest backstory that you'll never get better than. I'll never read a better than what I've created for him. And as I say, with most of my characters, that's what George Lucas does best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number one is Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, nice. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I just think it's one of the. I don't know, it always felt like he was one of those characters that was in there and was a a pretty solid like plot device, but no one ever I feel like no one ever really talks about him unless it's like in a in a joke right kind of a way. Um and I always just I I like the thought of like an intergalactic gangster mm-hmm. that's controlling like an intergalactic Have you ever mob. read <laughs> Tales from Jabba's Palace? There's some great Jabba the Hutt stories uh, in there. I, I liked his counterpart, Pizza the Hutt. Nice. Which Pizza is actually uh, yeah. <laughs> well, a like, very similar I, character in all reality, though. Well, he's, he's, he's kind of been made into a farce, though, just, yeah. with, the, just with the new, because they added him into A New mm-hmm. Hope, and he, he was smaller yeah. and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, when you first saw him in Return of the Jedi, it was he was this massive slug. And horrifying, just, like, yeah. disgusting. Staying, it was yeah. beautiful. And, and clearly, <laughs> people in the universe are scared, scared of him. To death yeah. Of him. Yes. Uh-huh. And 
It, and on top of that, if you didn't have Jabba the Hutt, you would have not had Princess Leia in the slave outfit. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's true. Aww. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every guy's dream. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Fight me for it. And on that note, my number one is Princess Leia. <laughs> no. In the slave outfit. Because right. of the slave outfit. Slave outfit, no slave outfit. Um, She's the best. Well, and I mean, for, for women of my generation and especially women like me who are dark-haired and dark-eyed, we didn't have anybody who was dark-haired, dark-eyed, who was the good guy mm-hmm. until Princess Leia and until Wonder Woman. Linda yeah. Carter is Wonder Woman. Yeah. So it was really Not the neat. first Wonder Woman. She was blonde. She was blonde. But, I mean, for me, so it was bad. always cool to be a five-year-old me looking up on, on the TV, because it would come on the TV every now and then, looking up on the TV and seeing somebody who looked like me mm-hmm. being tough. And not being pushed aside, and wasn't there just as arm candy? So, I'd, well, I'd even, I'd even, I'd even top, I'd even like add to that of like not just Princess Leia, but just Carrie Fisher in general. Well, like, yeah, as I got older, it was yeah. Carrie Fisher. Yeah, she had, yeah. She had she, yeah. as I said when before, I younger, she had, was, she had charisma, and it was yeah. her charisma, and she could butt it up against anybody else's charisma, yeah. be yeah. it hostily with Tarkin and Vader or. You know, in a mutual way with Luke and Han, yeah. mm-hmm. and she was always was this Leia, little, little right. teeny woman who was taking on the big bads, and it was pretty. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and for just, five-year-old me, that was amazing. Yes, to see. and I, so. I just remember her saying just throughout interviews that they're one and the same. Like Leia is mm-hmm. Carrie, and Carrie is Leia. Mm-hmm. There's no, mm-hmm. there's really not that much of a difference between right. them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my number one, Yoda. <laughs> Yoda. I mean, there's Yoda, Yoda, Yoda. Yoda. <laughs> um, just <laughs> I, I just, lo- I just remember watching Empire Strikes Back and just watching this, this creature talk to Luke and thinking that it was an actual creature. Like th- it's somewhere in the United States, there was this thing that. That that they they got yeah like I was I was totally just bewildered by this thing and then found out later that it was a puppet that that these just these master puppets had turned this thing creature into life and just mm-hmm. it's wisdom and it's like you know what slow down like you know ne- your point of view like your certain point of view everything you never know you don't judge a book by its cover and I always and as much as I will bag on the prequels he was still one of the best parts mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. the continuation of Yoda. And his story, right? Was I? I don't have, I don't have dark Yoda moments that I could think of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's always been. Well, he's always been Yoda, except for Episode One when they tried to repuppeteer him, and then it just looked horrible. And then they went back and digitally fixed it so that Yoda looks. No, that's good. D- that, but I, I get what you mean. Yeah, because yeah. well, I just remember watching Episode One and be like, I don't remember Yoda having bug eyes because mm-hmm. it looks like his eyes are about to pop out of his socket. Right. I don't yeah. know what's going on, right? Right. 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 But that, yeah, but that doesn't have to do with the actual <laughs> character, himself the character himself right. of but the character Yoda. Was great. The, right. character the character Yoda has so always yes. been Yoda, and it's <laughs> they did a great job right. with them. <laughs> All right, my number one would be the villain, the Lord of the Sith, Darth Vader. I was like, who, um, no, no, Vader. Um, there's just never been, there's never been a villain that left a bigger impression on me, uh, especially in the first two films. Here's, a, let me just say, David Prowse. This is the one credit I really want to give that guy. There have been other people who have worn the Vader suit since mm-hmm. him in the newer movies. Mm-hmm. No one wore that suit and actually encompassed that both um, terror and again in like return of the jedi when he's looking at luke being electrified Mm -hmm. and he tilts his head just enough to where you're like you can see that he and he looks back at the emperor and then back with the head tilt and then makes the decision Mm -hmm. in his redemption just that character nothing ever like him no villain no redemption story any better i and one one to add on about that it's i know we were not not supposed to talk about rogue one but i have just because it's a darth vader incident that just the end of rogue one when you actually because like throughout the thing you'd, you'd see him and he was i mean you knew that he was a bad guy but it it always felt to me like he was holding back and then you see him in rogue one and you just see him tear into just rebels just left mm-hmm. and right right and it's like that's that's vader right there yeah <laughs> right 
Outstanding. That is a great place to end this one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, come back next week because we are doing everything else that wasn't in the originals that we keep trying not to go to. <laughs> yeah. So it's go, hard. go to the uh, website, www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use the com. We paid, we paid extra, extra for it. it. I like the people. Some people are still doing that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> uh, go to the uh, YouTube and subscribe and click click uh, the little bell for the notifications. We paid extra. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, no, no, we, we don't pay extra. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, go to the Twitter. Go to the Instagram. Go to the Facebook. Talk to us. We will talk back. Mm-hmm. Answer the polls. Mm-hmm. You'll know, probably be on the show. So uh, send smoke signals. Do whatever. And, and, and give a little love message to Kaj because we miss him. Yes. So until next time, I'm Dub. I'm Blize. I'm Miss Geeky Page. I'm the loved Kaj. <laughs> I'm PB and Jason. Keep, Keep on geeking on. No worries for this. <laughs> You've been listening to iHeartGeek. Our Twitter account is at iHeartGeekShow. Hope you enjoyed the show. 